Hello, this is the final video in this series looking at derivative formulas. Uh, we're going to look at three more examples of um, how to quickly calculate the derivative and, and end up using it to uh, find something out about the function. My name is Akira Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this journey. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this example is the following. I have this function x minus 1 on top of x plus 1. And I'd like to know where, this equation, where, the, where the equation of the tangent line to this curve is parallel to this other line here, x minus 2y equals 2. OK, so what is the equation? Of, what is the slope of that line? It's not in the right kind of format. y equals mx plus b, you can read off the format. So we can quickly just make that happen. Move the 2y over, move the 2 over. 2y is equal to you know, 2 minus x divided by the 2. You end up with half x minus 1 is the equation. So the slope of this line is 1 half. That's what we need. What are we going to do with it? Well, our line should be parallel to that line. So our line, the tangent line, should have a slope that's the same slope. Parallel lines have the same slope. Okay. Um, and so we have the tangent line should have a slope of a half. In the previous question, we, we saw the tangent line had to be set equal to zero. In this question, the tangent line has to be set equal to a half. Okay. So tangent line, we have to calculate the derivative here. Quotient rule, take the square of the denominator, bring the denominator up to the top, multiply by the derivative of the top, x minus one's derivative is a one. Put a minus sign, reverse that process, leave the numerator alone, and take the derivative of the bottom, but x plus 1 derivative is also 1. It's in the right mx plus b format. Just read off the m. All right, now something happens with this numerator. We have x plus 1, but then minus x plus 1. So those 1s double up. The x's cancel out. This guy's derivative is 2 on top of x plus 1 quantity squared. This must be equal to a half. For what x values? We have to find that. How are we going to solve this? It's a fraction equal to a fraction. Cross multiply. So 4 should be equal to the quantity of x plus 1 squared. OK. So x plus 1 quantity. Don't, don't multiply that out and try to set up to be something that you can factor. It's already set up for you. It's already completed. The square is completed. Just take a square root. It's this action of taking the square root to solve an equation. That's where the plus or minus comes in, in front of the root. And so, so x plus 1 should be equal to plus or minus the root of 4, who is 2. On the one hand, x plus 1 equals 2. And so that's going to be x equals 1. On the other hand, x plus 1 is negative 2. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and get the y value at the same time. So if x is 1, go back and y is equal to 0. That numerator is 0. Denominator is 1, 2. Okay. So the point is going to be 1, 0, the point of tangency, and the slope is a half. So the equation of this tangent line here is going to be, well, um, the y is 0, the x is 1, we plug in the m is a half, and we'll get the fact that b is negative a half. Okay. So uh, y equals half x minus a half parallel to y equals half x minus 1. Okay. And the other guy would be x plus 1 being equal to negative 2. Subtract the 1, x is equal to negative 3. Taking that in, negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4 up top. And negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 underneath. So balance is to be a 2 when you divide. So the point is negative 3, 2. The slope is still a half. mx plus b. The x is a negative 3, the y is a 2, so we have 2 equals half of negative 3 plus b. So we have to add that 3 halves over, and so uh, about 7 halves, yeah, that's what b is, 7 halves. So y equals half x plus 7 halves. These are the two lines that are parallel to the given line, and they are tangent at the same time, tangent to the curve. All right. Good work. Good question. Not bad. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Question number two here. Uh, here's a line. Okay. And then here's a function. 
And I would like that line to be the tangent line. This is a little weird. Okay. Usually we're trying to find a tangent line. Here we're trying to, we have the tangent line and we're trying to find the function. Well, we have part of the function. The function's y equals c times the square root of x. For a special value of c, this guy will be the tangent line. Hmm. Well, what's so special about this line? Its slope is the derivative. So if your function is y equals c root x, then uh, we're going to have to find these, uh, find the value of c, but then we have to also find um, the, uh, the point of tangency at the same time, the x value of the point of tangency. Okay, so uh, this point of tangency, let's call it x naught, associated y naught that goes along with it. Okay, and so we plug... Um, so at the point of tangency, what happens is the, the curve and the line, they, they coincide. They, 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 they are the same. And so we can set these equal to each other. It doesn't tell us directly what one of them are, but it's a relationship between the two unknowns, the C and the X naught. At the point of tangency, at X naught, the line should be equal to the function. Okay. All right. And at the same time, the slope of the tangent line should be one third. Right. I'm sorry, three halves. Where did one third come from? I don't know. Slope of, the, slope of the tangent line should be three halves. So this derivative should be three halves at x naught when you plug in x naught. Um, what's the formula for the derivative of root x times c? Well, you keep the c, and then you, root x is derivative. You treat x as to be to the half, so you bring down the half, take it to the negative half using the power rule, and we'll put that back underneath as a c over 2 root x. That's your derivative at any value of x. But at x naught, it's going to be equal to 3 halves. So these two equations govern our two unknowns. The fact that it's a point of tangency, so they have to meet up. And the fact that the tangent line slope has to be 3 halves. So the derivative must be 3 halves at that point of tangency. So we can solve this system here by figuring out what maybe the radical of x naught is. Maybe I find out what, you know c is. So divide by 2, we find out that c is equal to 3 rad x naught, and we can take that into the other equation and figure out what the x naught is. Rad x naught and rad x naught, that's convenient. That would just be x naught. Subtract the 3 halves of x naught over, so 3 minus 3 halves is just the 3 halves, and then we multiply by the reciprocal, multiply by 2 thirds, and we'll have the fact that x naught is 4. That worked out well. Okay, that's the point of tangency. X naught is 4. Okay, and then C is related to that. The, sub, the thing that we subbed in is a perfect place to go back to. C should be equal to 3 times the square root of 4. And we did it. We solved the question. C should be equal to 6. Well, X naught should be equal to 4. Find the value of C such that the line... 3 halves x plus 6, y equals 3 halves x plus 6, is tangent to the curve y equals c rad x. If you pick c to be 6, that will be your tangent line. Okay, at the point when, when, when x naught, the, the point of tangency, the x value of the point of tangency is a 4. Okay, Let's see if we have time for one more. Okay, what we have here is a piecewise defined function. Okay, um, it's a line up until x e equals 1, and then after x equals 1, it's a parabola. Okay, the question is, is the function differentiable at x equals 1? And at the end, we're supposed to sketch the graph of the function and its derivative. Um, the function is differentiable, you know, in its parts, but the question is, how do those parts meet up? Is the derivative coming into one the same as the derivative coming out of one? And if so, then we could, you know, go with that. Well, first off, do the function, does the function even meet up with the other function? Because if it doesn't, then it's not differentiable if you're not continuous. So let's check continuity first. Okay. To be continuous, that goes back to, the, you know, the previous chapter where we're saying, well, you know, if I plug a 1 in on my left-hand limit and a 1 in on my right-hand limit, they have to be the same. And so... Is it true that when you plug a 1 into 2 minus x, you get the same thing as if you plug a 1 into that quadratic? 
um, you get a 1 out, of course, when you plug it into 2 minus x. And when you plug it into that quadratic, you also get a 1 out. So they meet up. That's a good thing. But it's a question of how do they meet up? Because if they meet up in a sharp point, that's not differentiable. Okay. And so what's the slope coming in? And how does it measure up to the slope going out at x equals 1? And so we just take the derivative, right? Um, 2 minus x is derivative. That'll give us the slope coming in. That's a negative 1. And uh, two, uh, x squared minus 2x plus 2 derivative is 2x minus 2. This will be our derivative function for the different parts. Broken at 1, but is it really broken? Do, do these parts meet up? Because if the slope coming in is negative 1 and the slope going out is also negative 1, then we have a nice smooth differentiable curve. But it turns out, though, when you, when you put a 1 into the, the second branch for x's that are bigger than 1, you put a 1 into that and you get a 0 out. You go in at a negative one slope on the left, you come out with a zero slope on the right. They don't meet up. Okay. I mean the the the, 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 the two parts meet up, but they don't meet up in a in a smooth manner. The the uh, the derivative isn't continuous, basically. So the function is not differentiable at x equals one. And here's the graph. You have a line, you have a parabola. They meet up, all right, when x is 1 and y is 1. But the way that they meet up is at a sharp point, and you're not differentiable at such points. Okay, you have a slope of negative 1, and then you have a slope of um, 2x minus 2. We have this corner point, so you're not differentiable. And then here's what the derivative graph looks like with an open circle on the the horizontal line and a, I'm sorry, closed circle on the horizontal line and an open circle on the on the uh, 2x minus 2 line. And you did it. All right, great. Bunch of examples and a bunch of formulas. Now we can get our hands dirty and really start looking at some derivatives. Um, thank you for watching. This video is a little bit long. Sorry about that. This ends the series on derivative formulas. What comes next is expanding our universe of functions that we can take the derivative of. We're going to move into trig. Why can't we take the derivative of sine, cosine, tangent, exponential, e to the x? That's what's coming in the next series. The derivative of um, exponential trig functions. We'll look at some examples there. And then we'll make our way into ultimately the chain rule, where we have a function who is a composite function inside of another function. And we'll learn how to take the derivative of those kinds of functions. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Reach out to me if you need any help. I'll be happy to help you. I'll see you in the next video.